하늘을 달리다 오늘은 가을바람월드 채널에 올리는 마지막 영상인데요 짧은 시간이었지만 구독자분들께서 UAM 산업에 대해 이해하시는 데 도움이 되셨는지 모르겠습니다 앞으로 UAM 관련 영상은 별도 하늘에 달리다 채널에 업로드할 예정이니 관심 있는 분들께서는 댓글 링크를 통해 계속 UAM 산업을 같이 공부해 나가셨으면 좋겠습니다 이번 영상은 지난번에 이어서 조비의 6월 20일 발표 내용에 대해 좀더 깊이 알아보는 시간을 가져보려 합니다 이날 엘리베이터 OS 승인 소식 뿐만 아니라 현재 조비가 FA 형식 인증을 위해 진행하고 있는 업무에 대해 상세하게 설명하였는데요 간추려 보자면 첫째 파트 1 3호 항공운송 사업자 인증을 받기 위해 그간 진행한 활동 과정 둘째 조비의 S4 기체 조종사를 교육 훈련시킬 시스템 준비 과정 셋째 기체 유지 보수 방식과 보수 인력 교육 방안 이러한 내용에 대해 조비의 운영 책임자인 보니시미가 설명하는 인터뷰를 보실 텐데요 보니시미는 2020년 우버에서 조비로 합류하여 에어택시 서비스 운영 개발을 책임지고 있습니다 지난 영상에서 OS 설명을 진행한 개발 책임자인 에릭 알리송과 협업하여 에어택시 운영 서비스를 총괄하고 있는 담당자로 보시면 될것 같습니다 그럼 영상 보겠습니다 Now let's look at our checklist in detail and map Joby's progress to date. Up first is the air taxi service. The foundational requirement for operating any type of airline or air taxi operation is an air carrier certificate. An on-demand air taxi service like ours must be operated under Part 135, which is a different certificate from the ones used at large airlines who are regulated under Part 121. Getting a 135 air carrier certificate is a five phase regulatory process that involves writing and submitting numerous manuals detailing the processes and procedures your air taxi operation will follow. When I joined Joby, we very quickly came to the conclusion that we should build our air taxi operation from scratch rather than buying an existing part 135 operator. Building it yourself allows you to develop procedures specifically relevant to the unique nature of the operation you plan to do, rather than adopting procedures and manuals written by others that would not be relevant and would require extensive rework to be successful. So we completed the five phases, writing more than a thousand pages of manuals and received our Part 135 certificate in May of 2022. For two years now, we've been flexing the muscles of our air taxi operations using the aircraft right behind me, a Cirrus SR-22, which is an aircraft that can be operated with one pilot and four passengers, just like our Joby aircraft. We're using this aircraft to test different types of operations and our software integrations. A couple of examples of what we've done with our Part 135 over the last two years include running an internal shuttle service for team members between our sites, bookable via an early version of the Rider app that allows for on-demand by the seat booking, building and using systems to take payment from external customers, and offering a paid charter service to both team members and non-employee customers. All of these trials have been opportunities to use and continue to improve our software, like the Pilot app, and our back-end scheduling system, as well as the linkages between these systems. Looking ahead, we'll be able to add any type certified aircraft to our Part 135 certificate by going through an abbreviated approval process. We'll be able to make progress on the first three of five phases required even before receiving our Joby aircraft type certificate, expediting our path to operations. Alongside the Part 135 certificate, we'll also need to build out a number of other items you'd typically associate with running an airline, including operation centers that manage and monitor the aircraft and customer service centers. So now that you have an airline, you'll also need the next item on our list, pilots to fly the aircraft. From decades of working as both a pilot and an airline executive, I can tell you that the supply of pilots ebbs and flows over the years. But it is critical for an operator to be able to consistently source the pilots needed for day-to-day -day operations. According to federal regulations, a pilot flying under a Part 135 air taxi operation must have at least 500 hours of flight time and have training specific to the exact aircraft they will be flying by an approved training program. This means that at a minimum, we must create and receive FAA approval for a training course to fly the Joby aircraft. So let's talk about the development of that training. This course includes training materials and manuals to familiarize pilots with the equipment and operations of the aircraft. 
the use of flight simulators that are separately qualified under Part 60 to ensure they provide an experience that is fully representative of piloting the real aircraft, solo flights in the aircraft itself, and a series of competency checks that test trainee pilots on their knowledge and piloting skills specific to the Joby aircraft. And then a final check ride in the simulator followed by initial operating experience in market prior to carrying passengers. We've been working for several years now on the structure of the course with over 100 lesson modules in development and testing. At Joby, this aircraft specific training program will be operated within a part 142 training program, which allows us to train pilots whether they'll be flying directly for Joby or for another operator who has purchased the aircraft. Our relationship with the Department of Defense has been a huge help with the development of our training as we've been able to go through the course with numerous DOD pilots to get feedback on the clarity, quality, and flow of materials. Last year, we had four DOD pilots fly the Joby aircraft remotely after completing an initial version of our training course. In total, 10 pilots have now flown the Joby aircraft through full transition. We've also completed more than 100 flights with a pilot on board the aircraft. And with our final FAA-approved course, we expect to be able to train commercial airplane pilots to fly the Joby aircraft within roughly six weeks. This is very similar in content and duration to the type of training an airline pilot receives when they learn a new aircraft. And it's a sort of program I've experienced many times in my career. Now, the real long lead item here, though, is the flight simulator. Anyone developing a single pilot air taxi will need to use high fidelity immersive flight simulators before pilots can fly the real aircraft in commercial air taxi operations. The regulations allow for training in a level C full flight simulator. These are extremely high tech, full motion, six axis devices that replicate the aerodynamics, systems, controls, and motion of the aircraft. They also give pilots a full field view that very accurately replicates the real environment in real time. This allows for operation of the simulated aircraft in a full range of realistic scenarios through the entirety of its flight envelope, providing a training experience that's as close to flying the real aircraft as you can get without actually being in one. These simulators must be qualified by the FAA according to requirements laid out in Part 60. And to be clear, the development and approval is a multi-year process. We expect to perform hundreds of tests comparing simulator data to real aircraft data to ensure the simulators will meet FAA requirements and actually simulate our aircraft. In March of 2022, we announced a partnership with CAE to develop these simulators and we've had steady engagement with the FAA on the qualification plan, leaving us on track to qualify the Level C simulator prior to commercial operations in the U.S. For our initial commercial operations in Dubai, we'll use a fixed base version referred to as a Level 7 simulator, which will be delivered by CAE next year. This training course and the simulators to go along with it are table stakes required for us and anybody else to train qualified commercial pilots to fly an eVTOL aircraft. But where are we gonna get the pilots? We expect our initial several years of operation will be staffed by pilots with experience in airline or military flying who've decided that they wanna live and work in the same region and be home every night. However, we know that to scale, we will need to develop our own pilot training pipeline. There are two types of training programs for new pilots. Part 61 and Part 141. Part 61 is unstructured, not reviewed or approved by the FAA, and is less efficient than the more rigorous FAA-approved Part 141 programs. Like other training programs we've described, there is a long lead time in building out FAA-approved pilot training programs, and we're well on our way towards initial certification of a Part 141 pilot academy. While this may not be an absolute requirement to launch operations, we're very proud of our work in this area, and we believe it will be very important to scaling our future operations and broadening access to becoming a pilot. Now, coming back to the checklist, we're going to look at how we'll maintain our fleet of aircraft. Helicopters typically require multiple hours of maintenance and associated downtime for each hour of flight. 
reduced maintenance costs, and higher aircraft availability are two of the core value propositions of electric air taxis. For Joby to deliver a cost-effective air taxi service that our customers can rely on, our aircraft is designed with these characteristics in mind. We've made design decisions across the aircraft to optimize for reliability and maintainability. For example, choosing direct drive motors that are considerably simpler to maintain than motors with a gearbox and hundreds of moving parts. Our propulsion motors are also easy to swap and replace, meaning the type of maintenance issue that would take a helicopter out of service for two weeks could be instead completed overnight on a Joby aircraft. Looking ahead to commercial service, we are uniquely positioned to build out an efficient maintenance repair and overhaul, or MRO, operation because of our vertically integrated structure. In flying more than 33,000 miles with full-scale prototypes, our team has learned a tremendous amount of how to keep our aircraft in flight-ready condition most efficiently. Those learnings feed directly into the instructions for continued airworthiness submitted as part of the aircraft's type certificate, as well as the way we are structuring our maintenance operation. To be able to carry out all needed MRO activities and do them at dedicated bases in our target markets, we applied for and received our Part 145 Maintenance Repair Station Certificate. This was a multi-year process that involved drafting and submitting hundreds of pages of manuals, just like the Part 135. We're already using our Part 145 to perform certain inspections on our existing fixed-wing aircraft and our Joby aircraft prototypes. Again, exercising mission critical activities in advance of operations. And just like with the part 135, we'll be able to add the capabilities to work on our entire Joby aircraft once it's type certified. There are many reasons why we're building out MRO capabilities in house. First, if we don't build it, it won't exist. We're the only team in the world right now that knows how to maintain our Joby aircraft. Without an MRO, we can't launch operations. Second, quality and safety. We've developed and implemented FAA compliant quality and safety programs as the foundation of our 145 repair station that meets our high company standards. And by conducting the maintenance ourselves, we can ensure they are properly maintained to our standards. Third, efficiency. Under part 135, an air carrier can perform certain maintenance activities, but not necessarily in the most efficient and cost-effective manner and most repairs and all overhauls cannot be conducted under Part 135. These must be done under Part 145, which is a separate entity from the air operator. With our Part 145 in hand, we can set up MRO bases in market, not only in the US, but also globally, and we're already in the site planning process to support our Dubai operations. We can also establish component repair sites in market that perform repairs and some overhauls to aircraft equipment separately from our manufacturing facilities. Importantly, this capability, along with the overhauls and parts from our manufacturing division, allows us to offer valuable support services to any operator of our aircraft. Having integrated systems between the OEM operations and maintenance organizations also brings added benefits. We're already developing tools that continuously monitor the health of aircraft systems based on operational flight data. These tools can reduce unscheduled maintenance events through predictive maintenance programs, something that's only possible with integrated systems that allow data to flow from the operations to maintenance in real time. Finally, workforce development. With our Part 145, we're able to build a pipeline of talent by training and certifying maintenance repairmen who become experts in specific maintenance procedures. They then rotate through our Part 145 operation using holistic experience and eventually becoming licensed A&P line mechanics who will work on the, our aircraft in the field. There are currently no training programs for mechanics on EV tall aircraft or electric propulsion in general. So we're developing these programs in-house for our mechanics. And I'm proud to say that we received a $1 million grant from the FAA to support this program. 최근 조비의 주가는 5불대에 머물고 있습니다. 이번 주 아처가 3불에서 3.6불까지 반등해 주면서 같이 힘을 내 주었는데요. 이를 변동폭은 크지만 월별 추이로 보자면 4.8불대에서 계속 지지선을 구축하고 반등을 해 주는 모양새로 
심리적인 기대감이 5불 이하까지는 허용하지 않는 것처럼 보여집니다. 오늘은 조비가 FA 형식 인증을 위해 진행 중인 업무 과정에 대해 알아보았습니다. 단순히 진행 성과만 보던 것보다 훨씬 인증 작업이 광범위하고 심도 있는 업무라는 것을 알수 있었는데요. 올해까지 FA 형식 인증 절차가 마무리된다면 조비의 사업 모델이 구체성 있게 드러나지 않을까 기대가 됩니다. 궁금하신 점은 댓글로 알려주세요. 감사합니다.